Greetings, my name is Ellen Ray Cachola. I'm the Evening Supervisor and Archives Manager for the University of Hawaii School of Law Library Archives Department. The Law Library serves the William S. Richardson School of Law, so we've been collecting the papers of judges, professors, historical cases, and events, as well as programs in the Pacific that have impacted Hawaii and Pacific and Asian law. We have policies that define the scope of what the archives does, and this is just a quick overview of the table of contents of our archives policy for physical and digital collections. So you can take a quick look at the type of things that we work on as a way to get a sense of what we do as an archive. We have a training manual to help um, train our team to do the various parts of archiving. The first step of archiving is the refoldering and the relabeling. So transferring documents from their original boxes, usually banker boxes, and into acid-free boxes and acid-free folders. I do some preliminary work of defining what each box content is about. I give them a series number, I give them a box number, as well as a sense of the subjects within the collection. And then from there, I have a team to help me relabel the items in the box as they are placed into acid-free folders. On the left side of the tab of the manila folder, you have the series number and the series name and subseries, which are also called subjects. We have also an item name, which is a description of the items within the folder, as well as the date. I have a convention that I use to teach students how to describe cases, emails or letters, newspapers, books or articles, teaching materials, and Copies. there's a formula that students follow to describe the item type as well as the subject of the materials. And then on the right side of the tab is the collection name, the series number, the box number, and the folder number. I also have to teach students how to weed the collections in terms of removing, we keep at least two copies of an original document. And we also have to create a, a more organized folders because a lot of the folders in the original boxes are very bulky. So we have to learn how to maintain the original order, but to place documents into slimmer sets of folders, making sure that each of the labeling documents the original source in which all of those folders might have uh, come from. We also remove paper clips, staples, and rubber bands. And so a lot of our archival materials are purchased. Our folders, our boxes are purchased using grant monies, or sometimes we have sponsorship from the law school to help us preserve a particular collection. These items are kept in intensive storage. And this is an example of a box that is being relabeled in action. So the information that is written on the tab of a manila folder is then typed into a spreadsheet. The primary series and the subseries is the information from the left side of the tab. The item is from the center of the tab. The folder number is the acronym of the collection name, the series number, the box number, and then the folder number, and of course the date, which is on that column there. Once we have the spreadsheets, I also analyze and make sure that the metadata information is correct. Then we import them into Omeka, which we have a CSV import button. And if you click here, you can see a quick video of the process of the CSV import function. There's a browse button and we search for the CSV file that is on the local computer and we import that CSV file and we have steps to make sure that the item is the type is selected and the collection is selected and then we also have extra steps that we need to do to make sure that the item record that is produced is going to look fine and then all of this information is then mapped onto a Dublin Core metadata standard that Omeka is based on. After the items, the folders have been typed into Omeka, the box is then ready for storage in intensive storage, which is our climate controlled room. Every box, before we put it in intensive, needs to have a box label, such as you can see here. The box label has the collection name, it has the series 
number and series name as well as the box number and then a list of the various subjects that are within the box so that people can get a sense of what's in the box without having to open the box up. Um, Intensive storage is a climate controlled room as I mentioned. There are chillers in our intensive storage room that make sure the temperature is consistent within 65 to 70 degrees as, as well as humidity percentages. And we have staff that checks the intensive storage room in the morning and the evening to make sure that the temperature is consistent. And then we also have labels on each of the ranges in intensive storage so that there is a visual cue as to what information is in what shelf in intensive storage. There's also a numbering scheme on each of the ranges as you can see. And all of that information is then visualized on this intensive storage map which lays out all of the ranges with the numbers and then also with the collection names that are associated with each range. Uh, and you can also see that there's this yellow box here and it reflects law books that we also keep in the collection. It's not just archives, but we have Hawaii revised statutes, Hawaii court rules, which are law books that we keep for historical research purposes. We also have other older law codes and books from the federal level as well as other historical law volumes that we keep for historical legal research purposes. We also have administrative records here and so this intensive storage map is really helpful to provide a visual reference tool for people to navigate this space. We also digitize our archival items and the first item that we have here is the CZUR book scanner for scanning books and bound items. We also have a document feeder to scan loose documents at eight and a half inches wide and that are not brittle and that don't have staples or paper clips to prevent the jamming that might occur. We also have a cassette digitizer to create mp3 files as well as a VHS digitizer to create mp4 files. We've also worked with Ulu Ulu Archive to help us to preserve film reels as well as we've worked with Hamilton Desktop Network Services to scan some oversized material that exceed the dimensions of our digitization tools. So when people want to search the metadata within our collection, we have an online finding aid that's based on Omeka. And this is just a landing page of archives.law.hawaii.edu, which is our archives website. And we can see the homepage has links to the various collections that are currently available for research. Every collection in this website has a finding aid and so if you click on the finding aid on the menu bar, you can search the various finding aids. And this is a John Van Dyke collection. It has the introduction, the biography on the landing page, but also on the right side, you see the golden boxes and they are organized by series, which is the thematic organization of the collection. But within each series is a box list or boxes that, have, that are box listed as well. And this is all the metadata that has been written from the folders into the spreadsheet and then imported into Omeka and now it's searchable in this way. So how do you search across our collections? So there is the how to search button on the menu bar. You click there and it will take you to a page that has different ways to search our collection. But for the purpose of this video, we'll focus on the exhibit search function. The way to get there is you go back up to the search bar to the top right and there is the ellipses, three dots. Next to the search bar, you click on the ellipses and then you make sure that keyword is selected. Then you uncheck item file collection and simple page, making sure that exhibit and exhibit page is still checked. When you're ready to enter your search term, you're now able to by putting in a term so for example Richardson and then you click on the magnifying glass to be given search results and so this brings up finding aids and box lists that have the word Richardson on it so this really helps to narrow down research and to find specific folder items that are relevant to people so once 
a person has found metadata for an item that they want to look at either physically or digitally they can contact me at this is my access policy page and we have my contact information at the top we have COVID-19 access procedures but then we have also pre-COVID-19 procedures the main idea is that people can fill out the researcher registration form. And basically, I need people's contact information to get a hold of them, to respond to them. But also I need to know what is the item title, the identifier or the collection or the research question if you don't know specifically what they want. And so once they submit that form, I get a ping in my email and I can either email deliver their document or we can talk further to help narrow down their research topic. So exhibits are what we do to raise public awareness when a collection is available for research. So this is the picture from the Samuel P. King Archival Collection launch. And you can see that the librarians have used some archival imagery and have portrayed them there to show people examples of the information that we have about him. We also have uh, the John Van Dyke launch and you can see there's some information being portrayed here as well as there. We also have um, display boards that we've used to communicate archival information. This is from the Pacific Island Google Institute reception and exhibit. And then we've also pivoted to an online exhibit and webinar um, recently when we had an exhibit during the pandemic. And so this one was about Hawaii labor history and bringing together archival collections from our archive to Center for Labor Education as well as Center for Oral History. And then we also had a public talk that was an online webinar bringing together Native Hawaiian and uh, community labor people to talk about the intersection of the Hawaiian movement and the uh, labor movement in Hawaii. So thank you so much, mahalo, for wanting to learn about our archive. Please visit archives.law.hawaii.edu or call 956-2867 or email me at ellenwrighthawaii.edu for more information.